All right, welcome to our lecture on principal stresses in which we figure out exactly why we're doing all these stress transformations. So what we learned last lecture is that every state of plane stress can be expressed as three unique vectors, um, but there are innumerable versions of these three vectors that depend on the orientation of the coordinate system. So we can turn our coordinate system and we'll get a different set of three vectors that represents that same physical situation. What we're going to talk about today is that for any state of stress, there is one particular uh, orientation uh, in which the following is true. Uh, sigma x prime is sigma max. Sigma y prime is sigma minimum. And that's minimum in terms of uh, how negative it can be. So negative 80 is smaller than uh, negative 10 in this situation, right? It's not magnitude, it's how negative. Um, and then in that situation, we don't have any shear, which is sort of fascinating, right? So we can find a situation where our normal forces are at their max and our minimum, uh, and in which we don't have any shear. Those normal stresses are called the principal stresses, uh, and the planes defined by that axis of orientation is called the principal planes. Um, and this can help us figure out where and how something is going to fail. So in this case here, uh, up here, when we're looking at this, um, uh, this uh, load cracking some concrete, we might say, well, oh, wait, we have a big shear force in this direction. Um, that's where we're going to have uh, our cracking here. Uh, but in fact, it turns out we get a crack along this line. Um, and that line there is, uh, if we did an analysis there, we'd figure out that that's where some of our maximum stresses are occurring. Um, and <laughs> I always laugh at my own jokes. This one's not really that funny, but uh, so here's this little guy. It's funny because he's got, what is that, a, a beard? I'm not entirely sure what, what's going on. Maybe those are just stress lines. Um, so he's going to crush some concrete. All right, so let's talk about how we find those um, principal stress planes. Well, uh, we're going to use the, the um, equation that we used to find uh, sigma x prime uh, from our last lecture, and we're going to find the derivative and set it to zero, which uh, is pretty exciting stuff. I'm not going to make you do all that. You can look, you can look at, them, at the textbook to uh, go through that if you want. It's actually not. The math isn't uh, terribly complicated. Uh, it's just um, a pain in the neck. Uh, and we end up with this guy, right? So we have, this tells us our two principal planes. And you might say, what do you mean two principal planes? Well, if we, this uh, makes for some interesting math, uh, because it means uh, tangent of, say, 45 is the same as the tangent of 180 plus 45, so the tangent of 225. Um, go check your math. Go get, pull your calculator. Tangent of 45 is the same as tangent of 225, um, and that means we have two solutions here. Um, and then because we're dividing it by 2, right, if the tangent of 45 is equal to the tangent of 225, then when we solve for actually what theta is, we get thetas that are 90 degrees apart rather than 180 degrees apart because we're dividing by two. Uh, and we find that our principal planes are both given by this equation, that they are 90 degrees apart from each other. Uh, and the value of the principal stresses at those points, uh, basically we're going to take that theta and put it back in the other equations that we used from last time, and we can solve that uh, for the value of those principal stresses with this equation. Here, again, we're going to get two answers with this plus minus here. Uh, and again, how often are we going to use this equation? Maybe once or twice you'll do a homework equation that you do it by hand. But mostly we're interested in um, being able to calculate that quickly. So yes, we have some computers to help us out. So 
the principal stresses tell us the maximum and minimum normal stress, right? But they don't tell us a shear stress, right? Because at the principal axes, our shear stress is actually zero. Uh, so we want to find out too where our shear stress is maximized because some uh, materials are going to respond um, or fail or yield more quickly to a shear stress than they are to a uh, normal stress. Um, and so we want to find the maximum in-plane shear stress and happily it occurs uh, at 45 degree angle from the principal planes. Um, and so we don't have to do another set of calculations. We just basically know that it's going to be happening uh, in between the two principal axes. Uh, and we've got another equation uh, uh, to help us solve for that. And again, you can see that's going to give us, um, it's going to give us two planes, right? Um, all that's going to mean is your shear stress is sort of, is going to be in the opposite directions um, because you're going to change your plane by 90 degrees and it's just going to flip your arrows. Um, we can find that shear max with this equation here. And again, don't you worry too much about these equations. Uh, because we're mostly uh, going to solve these computationally. Um, and let's see. What's our normal stress uh, where our shear stress is at a max? It's going to be the average stress. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's really helpful. So we'll do a lot of uh, uh, coding stuff to, to find our answers here. Except this guy, he's gonna, he's gonna do it all by hand. <laughs> I have a guy in one of my labs who <laughs> refuses to use Excel spreadsheets uh, to solve uh, repeated equations and he just toils away with his pencil. That's this guy here. Don't be this guy. Use your computers. They are useful tools. I don't have to convince most of you. All right, good.